Hello folks, welcome back to National 5 Chemistry. Um, I'd like to tackle uh, today something called balancing equations. That's the learning outcome for this video. Um, I'm going to show you why we need to have balanced equations and perhaps two different ways to do it. There are quite a few out there though, by the way, so there's nothing to stop you googling YouTube. Um, googling YouTube? Searching YouTube um, for a variety of different ways to balance equations. But first of all, I'm going to explain to you why we need to balance them. I'm going to start with an equation which is not metal related, it's gas related. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to burn some hydrogen. Now here is a hydrogen molecule. Hydrogen one of our Hofbrinkels, in other words known as a diatomic molecule, always exists as little pairs. Here is an oxygen molecule. It also exists as a little pair. Burning, of course, involves taking something and joining it to oxygen. Just a very quick recap, by the way, I've done a double line there because... Um, if you recall, oxygen has six outer electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here's another oxygen, which also has six outer electrons, and it wants to have eight, so it requires to have two, three, four, five, six. So you have two shared pairs of electrons, that's why there's a double bond there. Um, they are going to react together. Now, chemical reaction, of course, means you break apart all these old bonds, you switch them around a bit, and we create some brand new chemical products. So we're going to take hydrogen and stick it to an oxygen. Uh, this, we're not finished yet though, the valency of oxygen. Uh, I know I talk about valency numbers a lot in the last video, but valency numbers, please remember, are the number of bonds they can form. So oxygen valency is two, hydrogen valency is one. So we need another bond here, which means we'll need another hydrogen here. And great, we've made the water molecule. Wonderful. And uh, there's a problem though. Because if you add this all up, you find we started with two hydrogens. Yeah, great, they're used up. We had two oxygen atoms. You can't have a leftover oxygen atom sitting all by itself. This will have only six electrons in its outer layer. It will not be stable. It will not ha be happy. So how do we get around that? Um, well, please remember... This is the need for a balanced equation, by the way. This is why you need to have balanced equations, because this equation at the moment is not balanced. We have used effectively used up that and that and that to make this, and that's left over. So how do we fix this problem? Well, please remember that we don't have a single molecule of hydrogen and a single molecule of oxygen. If I put these two gases into a balloon, I have trillions and trillions of molecules of each. So, to fix this problem, all we need to do is recruit another nearby hydrogen molecule. Because what we can do is, instead of leaving that left over, we can take the extra oxygen that we didn't use, uh, break apart this bond, stick it to another couple of hydrogens, and we'll make another one of these. So now, if we effectively we check what we've used up, as it were, this teams up with this and this to create this. Great. Now everything's used. So what did we actually need? We needed two molecules of hydrogen, one molecule of oxygen, and we produced two molecules of water. So let's turn this representation here. Actually, let's... Here we go. So this and this reacts with this. Let's turn it into a maths version of this we can say we needed two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule. Being chemists, of course, just like formula, we don't tend to write the one. It is there, but it's like a ghost one. Uh, and we produce two lots of water. So this is one way of balancing equations. You can do it graphically, if you like. You can physically draw out all the atoms you're going to need and all the atoms, molecules that you make. You can do it that way, absolutely. Um, there is another way to do it. Um, by the way, before we go into this, can I just remind you there's a ghost one here as well. You'll see why I'm putting these ones in in just a second, hopefully. Can I now show you here the, the more mathematical way of doing it? So, for every element on the left of the arrow and the right of the arrow, what I'm going to do is a little bit of multiplication and just check that we're all present and correct. So I'm going to take the big number, 
multiply it by the small number here. So 2 times 2 means you have got 4 hydrogen atoms on this side of the arrow. And over here on this side of the arrow, we have got 2 times 2, which is 4 hydrogen atoms. Excellent. Happy face time. Um, we can also do exactly the same thing here. We can take the big number here, and we have 2 oxygen atoms on this side. And we can do the same thing here. 2 times 1, 2 oxygen atoms. This equation is balanced. So this is a more mathematical version of it. How would it look? How would it have looked if I didn't start with a balanced? It would have looked like this. Hydrogen plus oxygen makes water. Now if we try, let's put the ghost ones in for a second. One there, one there, one there, and one there. So if we'd done that before, two hydrogens, two hydrogens. Starts off looking fine, except of course... Two oxygens, oops, one oxygen. That's why we need to balance it. Excuse me just a second. Now, on the next sheet, I'm going to show you two different ways of balancing this equation. Um, hydrogen plus oxygen makes water. Ghost one, ghost one, ghost one, ghost one. Um, we we don't have enough hydrogens to use up all the oxygens. That's the problem. So what we can do is we can fire a two in here instead. So two times two means we have four hydrogens here. We only have two hydrogens here, so let's change that to a two as well, and that will solve that problem. Four hydrogens. One times two, two oxygens. Two times one, two oxygens. Excellent. It's balanced. There is an alternative, which I'm going to show you. Some people like these alternatives, some people don't. My old boss used to hate this, interestingly, although it's technically still absolutely correct. Ghost one. Ghost one. Ghost one. Ghost one. Because we've got effectively too many oxygens here, what you could do is you could keep the hydrogens the same at two, but we only need one oxygen, which means what multiplier could we put in front of here, which would multiply by two to give you just one? I'll let you think about that. Go and pause the video and think about that for a little second. We only require one oxygen here. Because the hydrogens, if you look at it this way around, the hydrogens are fine. 2H. 2H. The problem is this guy here, this multiplier is wrong. What on earth could have multiplied this by to just produce one? Have a wee pause and have a think. And if you're back with me, then the answer is that. Because 2 times a half is 1 oxygen. So another way of balancing this equation is simply this. Hydrogen plus a half O2 makes H2O. This one up here, I had two hydrogens. In fact, I'll do it down here for clarity. Two hydrogens plus O2 makes two H2O. If you're decent at maths, you will see these are exactly the same they just the ratio is precisely the same. One to a half to one is the same as two to one to two. We've just multiplied everything up by two. It's your pick. Both of these are excellent. Um, I'm going to give you one last example uh, involving metals this time. Let's do a balanced equation involving metals. Now, last time I showed you a couple of three different reactions with metals. Let's pick metal plus acid. Let's do um, magnesium plus hydrochloric acid. That would make, I said last time, hydrogen and magnesium chloride. Hydrogen. And let's do the correct formula for magnesium chloride. We'll just do it in the corner here. Mg valency 2, because it's in group 2. Chlorine is in group 7, so its valency is 1. Swap these round, you get Mg Cl2. 
Now, let's check. Ghost one, ghost one. Let's do some multipliers here, guys. One times one is one. One times one is one. Looking good so far. Um, one times one is one. Uh, oops. Ah, okay. That didn't take long to go wrong. We've got one hydrogen here, but we require two hydrogens here. Well, that's okay. Let's just change that to a two. Let's have two, because that fixes that. Two hydrogens. Does it change the magnesium in any way? No, it doesn't. Okay, that's fine. Um, let's do two times the chlorine. Gives you two chlorines. And, oh, look, that was handy. Two chlorines. So that equation is now balanced. So it's Mg plus 2HCl makes hydrogen and magnesium chloride. Um, let's do one more example. Why don't we throw in a couple of concepts from the previous video on complex ions? Let's do an example with complex ions. Um, I would like to have a balanced equation for um, calcium and water. Let's do that. Now, calcium. Once we get back in the lab, by the way, we can actually do this. It's good fun. Calcium reacts nicely with water. Not going bang or anything like, like group 1's. Calcium is in group 2, so it's a bit easier going. So calcium plus water, I said to you on the last video, makes hydrogen gas and calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide is a complex ion, so just up in the corner here, we'll do its correct formula, Ca, that's group two, so its valency is two. Hydroxide, if you're not sure about this, look back at my last video, hydroxide, and I'm, I'm cheating because I remember this, but you would have to look up the data book with the table of complex ions. We find hydroxide, its formula is O1H1, and its valency is one. Because valency is the same as its charge. How do I know the charge is 1? Because this table conveniently tells me hydroxide is in the 1 column. I'm hoping that's still in focus. Um, so we now know the valencies. Let's swap them over. Calcium 1, hydroxide 2. Can't simplify that, so that's the final formula. CaOH. Two. Now that two is outside the brackets, which means we have two oxygens and two hydrogens. I'm not going to put the ghost ones in here, because it's going to start getting really complex. Please remember where you see nothing written there, there is a one. Let's do our multiplier and see how everything checks out. Calcium, well that's one times one. So there's one calcium on this side. One times one, one calcium here. Good start. Hydrogens. Uh, 1 times 2, there are 2 hydrogens here. Now, uh, look, hydrogen occurs in 2 different places. So 1 times 2, so there's 2 hydrogens here. But unfortunately, there are 2 times 1, there's another 2 hydrogens here. So there's 4 hydrogens in total. What's going to have to be our multiplier? <clears throat> Excuse me, what are we going to multiply the water by to give us 4 hydrogens here? You tell me, pause the video for 30 seconds and see if you can figure out what it is. I'm hoping you're back, realising that if we have 2 there, 2 times 2 is now 4 hydrogens, which fixes that completely. 4 hydrogens, 4 hydrogens. I wonder if it screwed up the oxygens though, eh? Let's check it out. 2 times 1, so there are 2 oxygens here. On this side... Looks like there's only one oxygen at first, but look, remember, there's two of them. Wonderful. So in fact, that's everything completely sorted. This final equation is calcium reacts with two lots of water to make hydrogen gas and calcium hydroxide. In the assignment... I think what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to get you to make some formulas for me, ranging from super simple 
up to complex ones. And then the second part of the assignment, I'm going to try giving you some equations and asking you to balance them for me. If at this point you don't get uh, balancing equations or formula, then don't flap. Doesn't mean to say you're going to fail National 5. Okay, I want you to relax about it. If this was a proper classroom situation, which it will be eventually again, then we can go backwards and forwards. You can ask me stuff, I can ask you stuff, and I can get a better impression of your understanding. So please don't panic if this is all gibberish at the moment. I promise you things will become clearer once we're back together in the classroom. This is the end of the metals topic. This skill here is essential for National 5. Um, and we are just about to switch over to atoms. We're going to go back to our atoms and we're going to look at them in more detail. Plus, we're going to explore the witchcraft of radiation, which is good fun. Thanks for listening, folks.